Did you know that probate records can yield a lot of information? Follow along as we head into the Norwegian Digital Archives to have a look. Hello, I'm Martin, your host at Norwegian Genealogy and then some. Welcome to this video where we will look at probate index cards and it is part of the article Norwegian Probate Records. If you have not read the article, I suggest you go to my blog, read the article and come back here for the video. You find the link uh, to the article in the description below. In my article, Introduction to Norwegian Probate Records, I said that it was the first of two. No, I see that a proper coverage of this topic will call for at least three articles. Let's jump into the digital archives. Here we are in the opening page of the digital archives. We want to use the find source feature. Under category we choose probate records and click probate index cards. We can see that our choice is displayed in the upper left corner. All the choices we make in this menu will be displayed here. No, we want to find the records from the area where our ancestor in question lived. There are two ways of doing this. We can do a text search. This can, however, be risky if the place or parish name we are searching appear several places. We know that our ancestor lived in Nes local parish that is found in Örlan parish in Sørtrøndelag county. Here we typed in the name Nes and we can see that this returned eight hits from all over Norway. Let's go back to the search page and look at a safer way to find the correct records. We said that our ancestors lived in Nes local parish, in Örlan parish, in Sørtrøndelag county. Under Geography we go to Trøndelag, select Sørtrøndelag and then we scroll down to and click on Nes. This brings us to the records from the Magistrate of Fusen. It is important to remember that the collection contains all the records from the area of Fosen. That means that it is important to keep in mind what court district or parish we are looking for. In many cases, the court district is the same as the local parish or parish. Clicking Browse Scans take us to the content page. Check in the box on the right side of the page if there are some notes regarding these records. These notes are in Norwegian, but Google Translate seems to do a decent job with them. Here the choice is easy. Clicking the only link brings up the first index card in this collection. This record is from the farm Abelvik in Ogdenes Parish. Normally the cards are displayed alphabetically. Records from the same farm are displayed chronologically, beginning with the oldest. I have come across some incidences where this doesn't hold true. If something is out of sequence, it is normally written in the remarks on the content page. This note tells us that 
probate index cards without a firm name are sorted at the back of the collection. We can have a quick look at this note that tells us that the cards have been scanned in two batches some years apart. The oldest scans are at the back of the picture sequence. This means that the alphabetization starts again with A in the old batch. A few collections have a form index looking like this. For most collections though, there is only one way to search for the right form and that is by browsing. We navigate these records in the same way we navigate any other of the scanned records in the digital archives. To speed up the search, we can grab the handle on the line above the picture and move it back and forth. We can also type in a number in the page box. The first thing we notice is that both sides of the card are scanned. The reason for this is that there is sometimes text on the reverse side. This is how we go about finding the probate index card we are looking for. Now let's go on and look closer at some of the cards and see what we can learn from them. If we go back to the first card in the collection from the Fusen magistrate, we are looking at the probate records for Lars Olsen Fjorn, who lived in Ogdenes local parish, that is in this case the same as the court district. The date of the court is not his death date, it tells when the estate was probated. As it happens, Lars was a, either a widower at the time of his death, or he had not been married. He had no living children, so in this case his siblings are his heirs. He has two sisters. They are Guru Ulstatter, who is married to Peder Pedersen on the farm Hamnshire, and Judith Ulstatter, who is dead and have two daughters, Malena Pedersdatter, who is married to Jakob Vorberge and Maria Pedersdatter, about 20 years old. From this we learn that Guru's children are Pedersens or Pedersdatters, and we learn that Judith most likely was married to a man by the name Peder. Finally, we understand that Malena's children will be Jakobsen's or Jakobsdatters. The estate's worth was a little more than 73 riksdaler, while the debt was 83 riksdaler, so this estate was bankrupt. In the article I mentioned that these cards are secondary sources. At the bottom of the card we have the reference to the actual source. It says Fusen probate records. Roman numeral 10a, 1783 to 1790, full 3 to 5. Full is an abbreviation for folio. This word has different meanings. In this case, it means sheet of paper and refers to the pages in the book. Let's see if we can find the actual record. We go up to the link banner and click search probate documents. In the text search we type in Fusen. This gives us a long list of probate records from the magistrate in Fusen. We scroll down to find shift protocoller. We find the probate book. We find the probate book 10A. 
we can look at the years and see that it matches the reference on the index card. This book has an index. Not all probate records has one. The records from Fusen does not have one. The content page does not give us any help. The link just brings us to the first page in the book. But this is not a problem, as we already know what pages to look for. In the page number indicator, we can see that the right page in this scan is Folio 1A. Advancing the scans, we see that this scan displays Folio 1B on the left and 2A on the right. Advancing the scans again bring us to pages 2B and 3A. In the lower right corner of Folio 3A, we see the beginning of a new record. We see the date matches the date on the index card, the year 1778, April 27th. We immediately see that the record is hard to read. And I'm not going into details here. We just browse down the page and find that this is indeed the probate record of uh, Lars Olsen Fjorden. On the next page, we find the information about Lars' sisters Guru Ulstatter and Judith Ulstatter. We notice that the person who transcribed the record has modernized the names. We find Judith's daughter Malena Pedersdatter and her spouse Jakob Woberge, and Judith's daughter Maria Pedersdatter, who are 20 years old. By clicking the clipboard, we can copy and paste this citation wherever we need to. Here I have manually added the Digital Archives Norway. Wow, that handwriting was worse than mine, and that says a lot. I readily admit that I have problems reading each and every word of this record. Going from an index card to the actual record gives us the advantage of knowing what names to look for, and it's therefore easier to recognize them in the text. In my next installment about probate records, I will go into more detail and try to bring the structure of a probate record into the actual source. I covered this in my article in the Introduction to Norwegian Probate Records, you find the link in the description below. Before we wrap up, let's look at a couple of more index cards. We stay with the Fulsen Magistrate and look at the probation that took place at Ogdenes Farm in Ogdenes Parish. The date is July 13th in the year 1695. The deceased is Jun Larsen, his widow is Kirsten Pedersdatter, his children are Sigri Jonsdatter from his second marriage, Nils Jonsson and Marit Jonsdatter. The record tells us that they are John's children with his first wife, Sigri Nilsdatter. This piece of information is not always given in these records. This makes us assume that Kirsten Pedersdatter is Sigri Jonsdatter's mother. If the information was not there, it would not be safe to assume that this was the case. John might have been married three or four times. Of course, as there is no church records going this far back, we will never know for sure. The record goes on to say that Nils and Marit are of legal age. 
The estate's estimated value was about 31 Riksdaler. The debt was 24 Riksdaler, so there are 6 Riksdaler to be divided between the heirs. Again, we see the reference to the actual source is at the bottom of the index card. The last index card we look at is from a probation that took place August 12, 1696. We are at Ogdenes Strand, st still in uh, Ogdenes Parish. The deceased is Kirsten Svensdatter. Her widower is Hans Jørgensen. Kirsten's children are Sven Olsen. He is of legal age and the son from her first marriage. Here, the name of Kirsten's first husband is not given. However, looking at Sven's patronym, we know that his name was Ole or Ola. Kirsten's children with Hans Jørgensen were the sons Jürgen, Ole and Anders, and the daughters Maren and Lisbeth. We see that the value of the estate and the debt don't add up, so this estate is bankrupt. It also say that the list of the estate's belonging mentions four silver spoons. And again, at the bottom of the index card, a reference to the actual source. I hope that I, in this video, has been able to give you some meaningful information, making you able to start using this source. If something is unclear or needs elaboration, please comment below here on YouTube. You can also comment on the article on my blog or you can send me a word by going to my contact page. There will at least be one more article about probate records. I'm very happy if you click like on this video and subscribe to my channel. This will give you updates when I publish new videos. If you want to be sure to get everything I publish, you need to subscribe to my blog. This is done on the front page. The only thing left for me is to say Tusen Tak for watching. Uh, andre runde begynner på toppen igjen. I'm very ha happy if you stick stick ka vov Wow! Ka? Yeah, wow, there. Bob. Bob. Wow, wow, wow. Oh.